Hello everyone, me again, back with some more testing of Ubuntu and I wanted before I start to highlight a couple of things. One, um, I really appreciate all the uh, views <laughs> these videos are getting, uh, so thank you for sharing it in Telegram channels or with your friends or just simply subscribing and thumbs upping the videos has really helped uh, get widespread uh, viewership of these videos I mean widespread it's pretty niche but um, it's nice to see uh, people both watching the videos and also engaging uh, in the comments uh, below I wanted to highlight a couple of comments on this video for example this was a, a pretty lengthy two-hour uh, video that I did um, last week and uh, there's a couple of comments one in this video I randomly picked a flavor I was going to play with uh, it turned out to be Ubuntu Studio. Uh, spoiler alert! And uh, someone suggested, "Why are you using you know random.org? You could use something else." And a comment was left: uh, "I could use a bit of Bash shell script to uh, determine which was going to be the the uh, randomly chosen uh, distro flavor." Sorry. And somebody else asked why use GDD Rescue rather than DD. So I wanted to, um, first of all, yes, I'm going to use that, that awesome little command line tool to pick a random number, uh, which you'll see in a minute. And the reason I use DD Rescue is simply because it gives me progress output. Um, and yes, I know newer versions of DD have a dash dash progress to give you some progress output, but the output in GDD Rescue is better. There's more of it. it tells you how many bytes per minute you know uh how how many minutes you've been copying the iso to the disk and uh, how many minutes you've got left estimated you know, completion time so it's just a richer thing however i've discovered another way to copy iso files onto usb sticks we'll get to that in a minute uh, the other thing i wanted to mention was under the community tab i put a poll where I asked, once I've done some ISO testing, what do you want to see next on the channel? And uh, I'd appreciate it if you take a minute to just go in there and have a look and read some of the comments and throw your input in there, uh, because it's very helpful for me to know what kind of videos people are expecting, what people want me to do next. Uh, so that's super useful. So let's go back to what we were doing this week, which is testing out the various flavors of Ubuntu and uh, I showed last time the flavors are listed down here on the main Ubuntu download site. I've copy and pasted those into a text document and put a number next to each one of them. Uh, so zero through to five and we've already looked at Ubuntu Studio which I actually still have running on the uh, on the old trusty ThinkPad X220 is still running over here um, but we're going to wipe that out and we're going to put something else on what we're going to put on will depend on the output from the rando tron or whatever we're going to call this uh this command um i've downloaded the isos for all of the flavors um apologies for the flickering i don't know why that is happening um i hope it's not too distracting so uh somewhere in here i used there it is random six which will pick a number between naught and five which lines up with our Norton 5 here. So let's just run this and see which ISO we're going to use. Number 4. Ah, Ubuntu Mate. Now it's really convenient because I was testing out um, Ubuntu Mate earlier so I actually already have it on a USB stick but what I want to show you is if I do disks uh, this is the handy utility I use for finding out uh, which device my USB stick is mounted as. So it's uh, SDC in this case. And actually, this I recently discovered this disks tool has the capability to write to USB sticks as well. So if you just go up to the three little dots, which I think is affectionately called a kebab menu, I think this three little lines is a hamburger menu. This one is the kebab menu. Uh, and there's an option here to restore disk image. So while you've got the USB stick highlighted, you check restore disk image. And it asks you what image and then you just go and find the ISO file that you've downloaded on your file system hit start restoring and it will do exactly that now I already did that earlier on it just conveniently the random number generator happened to pick Ubuntu Mate so 
that's handy so I'm going to close that and we'll switch over to the laptop and I'll pop out the USB key from my main machine and plug it in uh, yes unplug the USB key and if I plug it into the ThinkPad it should pop up there we go so yeah you can see it's Ubuntu Marty now as I always say this is not a final release I've got to try and figure out how to exit this now is it that one log out yes so we're going to restart so this is not a final release of 2004 2004 doesn't come out until uh, the end of April so I would only recommend people test this out but don't use it in production because it isn't ready yet so we boot up my ThinkPad with the USB key in the drive I pressed the button but I don't think it got it no oh it did so I'm going to just leave that alone because what I want to do is go through the testing process which you'll find uh, on the ISO uh, QA tracker which is iso.qa.ubuntu.com and if you scroll down to vocal daily and then whichever flavor your own personal random number generator has uh, has picked out uh, if you look for whichever flavor, so here I've got Ubuntu Mate. Oh, look, looks like four of the QA tests have been done uh, and a bug was found. Ah, there's a checkbox missing for whether you're plugged into the power source. So, all we do is we click on this, and you can see uh, that somebody has already done these uh, these tests, which is, which is super awesome. But I'm going to do them anyway. Um, so, at the moment, the uh, ISO is booting. Uh, we're going to pick which one shall we pick uh, we could pick let's pick use entire disk I think so that will wipe out whatever's already on there and put Ubuntu Mate on there now we know what's already on there it's Ubuntu Studio um, so boot up the image boots properly loads the installer with a welcome dialog with a language selected and try Ubuntu Mate and install Ubuntu Mate buttons so that's what I've done. I've put the USB stick in and just left it alone to boot. And if we go back to the laptop, you can see it's currently doing the uh, ISO uh, checker, uh, which is something I mentioned last time. I think I mentioned it when we were looking at uh, Ubuntu Studio, that uh, it now checks the ISO while it's booting the first time. Well, every time. Um, once you've Done a successful install off the USB key. If you're going to reuse it, you might want to skip this test. But because I've only just copied the ISO image onto this USB key, I'm going to let this run to the end, which shouldn't take too long. Obviously, the faster your machine is, the faster the USB key. And if you're using USB 3, then <clears throat> it should all go nice and quickly, only take a few minutes. The idea behind doing this is that. Before Ubuntu 2004 comes out, we can test it out, make sure stuff works, and report any bugs if there are any. There we go. We've now got a, a little chime. I don't know if you heard that. We heard that the other day, actually, uh, on one of the others. So the instructions, if you're following along at home on the ISO tracker, say click on the Install Ubuntu Mate button, which I'm going to do. Uh, it says the keyboard layout screen should appear. Uh, the proposed keyboard layout corresponds with your keyboard. Well, it doesn't because the default is US, so I'm going to have to change mine to UK. And uh, my default uh, is the, the standard UK layout. So I just want to make sure, use the little space down here to make sure that all the usual keys are in the right places. Yes, they are. And then hit continue. Select your keyboard layer and click continue on the screen. Let's try and maximize this. Then. See that? Uh, on the screen, preparing to install Ubuntu Mate. Hmm. Note the availability of the following components. Uh, it should have a thing that says whether network is available. So this we can test if we go back. Um, if I uh, if I go back to the previous screen I think is where it tests the network is available and 
a quick and easy test is to just pull the network cable out the back of the machine because as you can see from the little network icon up here we do have network uh, connection and if I pull the cable out the back actually physically remove it hopefully that icon should change huh yeah there we go so we've got, we've got no network if I hit continue ah there you go now we get this uh, screen where we get to choose the the wireless to to jump onto I don't want to use that I'm actually going to go back I was, that was just confirming that it does actually operate correctly and yeah, make sure it does detect when there's no network around and offer to connect to Wi-Fi but because my laptop's in a docking station and I've got a wired cable plugged in the back then I'm always connected to the internet on this when I do my test so it's useful to do that test so I'll, I'll hit continue uh, and um, click on installation type screen it appears so um, oh, I haven't got that far yet I need to choose whether I want to do a normal installation and whether I want to download updates or I am going to choose just the defaults normal installation and it's got download updates ticked bear in mind all this does is in the background while you're while you're doing the install is it just does like app to get um, update app to get download so it just downloads the the debs onto the hard drive so that the first time you boot up if there are any updates and a little update manager thing pops up it uh, it already has some of the debs on your hard drive it may not have all of them but at least it'll have some of them which speeds up your post install updates now bear in mind I only wrote this ISO image um, a couple of hours ago based on an image that was created today chances are there are not many updates but there might be some there might be some uh, I'm not going to tick the uh, third-party codex. I'm just going to leave that unticked. It's worth ticking it and someone doing the test with that ticked, but I'm not going to tick it on my run-through because I quite like going through just using whatever the defaults are, except for the keyboard layout. Uh, what else do I have to do? Uh, probably the next one is going to be partitioning. Okay, so we've decided to do uh, an erase disk and install uh, Ubuntu Mate. So that's the top one there. And that's the only thing I need to choose. Uh, this is going to wipe out the Ubuntu Studio install. Hit install now. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. Next up, it asks for my location, I think. Yes, there we go. It says, oh, where are you? So here I just say I am in UK. So it's automatically figured that out because I'm on the network. I think it uses something called GeoClue or something that figures out your rough location as in your country based on the IP address sometimes it gets this wrong and if you're not connected to the network often it will just say New York because it can't figure out where you are okay next up uh, I need to specify my personal details so Alan and we always call this one deep thought um, there we go that all works and I'm going to require my password to log in interestingly there I used deep thought um, I found a video I'd made a very long time ago and the host name of the machine was oh crikey I can't even remember what it was but it was a computer that I don't even remember where on earth it came from I think it might have been a computer from a 60s TV series or something um, it was the 42nd birthday of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy yesterday, so I feel it's appropriate to use Deep Thought and uh, the other various Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy computers. So uh, there's a little slideshow here, and uh, hopefully it will skip through each one of them. Uh, is there anything else in the QA? Let me just... Uh, oh, there we go. Yes, it's moving on to the next one. It's worth going through the text on here, reading it carefully, because sometimes typos slip through, or a screenshot might show something that isn't accurate, or show something that isn't available, um, and it's a good job that you know we can get an opportunity while the install's running to read this and look at the screenshots and make sure it's all um, accurate. So that's good. That looks good. I can't actually read that from here because this is on a, a separate screen. 
They're far away from me, and I can't really read that. So, deal for home users who want out of the most out of it. A traditional desktop metaphor. So basically, looking like a bit like GTK2, GNOME 2 from the past, but with modern underpinnings. Cool. Uh, included software, Ubuntu Mate Welcome. So, Ubuntu Mate Welcome is the thing that lets you um, find out more about Ubuntu Mate and launch the software boutique and all that kind of stuff and install more software. So this is just like highlighting some of the features of Ubuntu Mate. And let me switch back to the uh, test. Where is it? There it is. Uh, so press continue. The slideshow is entirely in your language. Wait for the installer to finish. Click the restart. Allow the machine to reboot. God, this is a pretty straightforward test, really. Uh, you can, if you want to, open up the little switcheroo down here and watch what it's doing, but I tend not to bother doing that. You can just let it run through. Uh, there we go. So... It does a scanning the mirror, which means it's checking for any uh, updates since the ISO was built. I think it's probably getting language files, some of the main core components of the desktop. I don't think it's updating everything, just updating like the language packs so that you know you've got the latest translations once the install is done. I'm, I, I'm guessing. I, don't, I think that's but um, we're nearly at the end of this this bit of uh, testing, and uh, it's only taken us like fifteen minutes. And so it's part of the part of my lunchtime. I can just test an ISO. Pretty easy. Doesn't take very long. Um, you don't have to go through and launch every application. That's a completely separate test. There is actually a um, another separate um, set of tests. If I uh, if I go back to the ISO tracker here. Uh, there's a live session one, but equally you can just install the whole thing, test stuff out, and if it doesn't work, then you know you can report a bug. Just as see down here, someone else has said yes, it works. Uh, they've reported or linked to an existing bug. Um, but yeah, when when this finishes, if it finishes successfully, then I will report this as passed as well. And that's a you know short period of time uh not hugely intensive, not particularly difficult uh so long as you've got a spare laptop, you could do this for any of the flavors. I think the nice thing about doing it for each of the flavors is you get to compare how the installers differ because the Ubuntu Mate installer is slightly different from the stock Ubuntu installer, even though both of them use ubiquity. Um, this obviously has a different slideshow and highlights different things, so there is a subtle difference in there. Similarly, the Lubuntu installer is different because that uses Calamaris as the installer instead of Ubiquity. And that's the great thing about the flavors, is they can each pick and choose the way to differentiate themselves, or if there's a particular component that works better for their users or for their development process, uh, they can pick something different. Great. So uh, it says once the installation complete dialog, I need to restart and the GUI is shut down and it should prompt me to remove my media. So if I just hit restart now, so that's not bad. That only took, what, 20 minutes to, to do. I've skipped the amount of time it took to. Uh, there we go. It says remove the installation media and press enter. So I'm just going to pull the USB key out. Hit enter and it should reboot. I have seen these sometimes not reboot. I've seen a lot of people report that um, sometimes you get an error that system D is hanging. Um, I've seen people report that. There's no disk light flashing, so I don't know what it's doing right now. It could well be doing the system D waiting for something to finish. But yeah, it's it's a good idea to try out all the different flavors because yeah, they all need uh, some QA. They all need testing for uh, the release at the end of April. And, you know, maximum, it takes about half an hour if you factor in the time taken to write a USB stick. 
less if you're testing in a VM because in a VM you don't have to write a USB stick you can just boot directly off the ISO image I like to test on this machine uh, because it's physical hardware and there's lots of extra things you're testing when you're doing it on physical hardware uh, like for example I could test the fingerprint reader I can test some of the hardware buttons that this has that my virtual machine won't have um, also I could do things like just pull the network cable out the back which tests how it behaves there this is interesting I wonder what's going on uh, is it any doing anything I'm just pressing alt f1 through alt f4 it doesn't seem to want to restart so I wonder if I need to report this in my findings or go and look for a an existing bug which is something I can do in launchpad but nothing is going on right now so even though I've pressed enter in order to reboot I'm going to pull the power button down in order to turn it off and I will go to launchpad and look for a bug where someone may have already reported this and if they haven't already reported it then I'll report it myself so uh, let's go back right, so now it's going to boot off the hard drive hopefully maybe I was just impatient but I think you should expect after you press enter it should shut down pretty soon after that it shouldn't take a long time to shut down Okay. Right. Uh, let's log in. And what did the test say? The test said the machine is rebooted. Allow the machine to reboot. System. So that bit failed. The machine rebooted. It loads into Ubuntu Mate, showing username. So it's step thirteen. Yep, and it did that, and I logged in. So. I'm going to consider that a pass, but I'm going to go looking for this. So the, the net result is I got a machine that has installed, and you can see that here. Um, let me just um, um, the display is all on um, my laptop. So let me just go to system settings. You can't see this unfortunately, and if I go to displays, which bring over here, I choose same on everything and make sure the resolution is right and then hit apply that's worked super so yeah looks like my Ubuntu Mate is uh, all installed and all the applications are there everything's looking funky and uh, sure enough software updater has popped up to say hey there's some updates I'll do that in a bit so I can go back to my QA tracker and I can say passed I didn't spot any critical bugs, but I can certainly go back and say uh, installed successfully on X220, uh, plugged in wired network. Took a while to restart post install, so I power cycled and just submit that there we go that's my little bit of QA at lunchtime nice and easy uh, there's also a thing down here which talks about uh, some of the bugs I can't see anyone having mentioned uh, that it uh, takes a long time yeah so you know you can you can like scan down here and maybe someone has already reported it but I think what I'll do is I'll go and have a look at launchpad uh, after lunch and um, yeah that's my little bit of QA done uh, and uh, now I've got a nicely working Ubuntu Mate install to noodle around with or wipe and pick a different uh, flavor I could go and have a look at um, in our little uh, document that I've got uh, my little G edit I can now move my Ubuntu Mate down and uh, Shift that down to done because I've done a little bit of testing on that. Go. And tomorrow or later on today, if I get time, I could pick one of the other flavors to, uh, to play with. 
So I hope that was useful. Show you what it's like testing out the uh, the ISOs. Uh, I would appreciate if you've got uh, the opportunity to go and have a look at the uh, community tab and give some response there. That would be really helpful to me. Um, thanks for watching and uh, do enjoy playing with Ubuntu Focal Fosa and stay safe.